Well, good morning, everyone. And you, those that are here and those that are watching online, good morning. Hope you're feeling warm this morning. You feel cold? Do you feel warm? We've come to warm up in the presence of our Lord, right? Anyway, again, I want to say welcome to everyone who's watching online and those that are here. Thank you for joining us this morning. I'm sure you that are watching online are much warmer because you're probably sitting there with your coffee and your blanket uh, and enjoying the service this morning. You feel like that this morning? Like a knitted hat and a little knitted sweater might feel pretty good right, th right now this morning. I do want to announce this morning, and again, I don't know who's watching online. Maybe some of you know Deanna. Deanna Shoulder, she has actually arrived here this morning. I think she is watching online. And it's her birthday, so we're saying happy birthday to her this morning. And RJ and Claire, their son, Ben, he arrived just yesterday, no, Thursday. From the third Thursday or Friday, he just came home. <coughs> and Fern is saying her son, Carrie, just got home last Friday as well. And that was Fern that just said that. And there's two people we need to pray for. Jacqueline, we need to keep on praying for her. She's home now and she's getting better. And we, she wants to come to, here, to church in person. So I told her we'll be praying for her and that we'll be thinking about her. And RJ, he wanted to announce to everyone to pray for him. His back is really, he's in a lot of pain in his back. It's arthritis. It's his arthritis is getting worse. And today, after our service here, in the fellowship hall, Pastor Tim, it's his farewell gathering. So they'll have cake. But let's remember, we're not allowed to stay. <coughs> Just grab your cake and go, is what they're saying. Again, because of the COVID numbers, we're trying to keep our distancing and, and not um, have it spread here at church. So if you just grab your cake and go, say goodbye to Tim. This is his last day today. So I just wanted to let you all know that. And Julie's got an announcement she'd like to make. Good morning, everyone. There's going to be a, a woman's retreat. How many are, well, I'm sure many of you are looking forward to this. It's, and so stay tuned for the women's retreat coming up, more information coming up. And I'm not telling you anything more, but just watch for the announcements about the women's retreat. <laughs> Everybody's laughing here. Does anybody else have anything, announcements they'd like to make? Ed just asked me, to, uh, so it was something was canceled in February. Uh, hold on here. There's going to be some open, opening registrations soon, and you can register online. Okay, that's de DEC, Death Encountering Christ event. That's been canceled, and there will be more information about that soon, and you can sign up online. And also game night. We're talking about game night as well. And Lynn is telling us that Shannon and may have game night next month instead of this month. We'll see how it goes. It depends, again, on the numbers. 
and we'll see how it goes. And also a friend here, and his father's in the hospital. Pray for him. And Diana Edwards, her uncle had a stroke. Pray for him. Any other announcements? Okay. Now it's time for worshiping our Lord. Are we all ready to worship him this morning? Are you really? And Lynn's coming to help with that. It's called Surrender. I have come to worship the God of wonders. And I am here to drink from the stream of answer die. I have come to listen to my Creator And I am here to lift up the name of Jesus Christ If you search me Let's give him my heart. Let's give him 
Let we have the lights up, please. Okay, now I'll give you some time here to put down your prayer requests. And remember, this is between you and your Father God. As you write it on the paper, God knows. So I'll allow you about a few minutes here to write this, and then we'll collect them and put them in our prayer request box. just give out of your heart in gratitude towards God and thanking him for what he's doing. And remember, we're not demanding any kind of offering, but it's up to you. It's between you and God, whatever you like to give. Let's pray. We're going to pray for the offering as well as your prayer requests that you put in that we've collected in this box. Our heavenly Father. We all just want to say thank you. We're so grateful for what you do for us every day. 
We thank you that we can gather here and worship you. We come before you humbly. And we thank you for your grace and your mercy. And Lord, we need your help a lot during these times. You know the requests that people have placed in this box. And that's between you and your people. Like um, Diana, CJ, various people that we've been praying for and asked those people that have asked prayer for. But those, those we know, but these that are in the box, they're between you and your people. And we just pray that you would answer their prayer. You know their hearts. You know their desire. And you know that they're very grateful for what you've done and what you're doing. We thank you for those that have given to support PDC. These are your people. They come to worship you. We want a place to be able to come and worship you. And for that, we're grateful. We're thankful for every moment. While we're sleeping, while we're awake, we're so grateful that we have a place we can gather and fellowship. We thank you that you're here with us. You're with us all day, all night, 24-7. And thank you also for the message that you have given to me to preach today. We pray your Holy Spirit would come, anoint the message, and anoint the hearts of those that are listening and those that are here and those that are online, that they be open to your word, because this is your word, Lord. Sometimes when we read the Bible, we realize that it's very applicable. Even those things happened many, many years ago. We just thank you, Lord, that it's still applicable for today. Today is our day of rest, and we're here resting in, in your presence. And we ask all these prayers in Jesus' name.
So are you ready for his word this morning? Yes? Someone's saying yes. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Apparently our little display of how much we've collected for a second phase of this remodeling fell in this so distracted people. So anyway, we're ready for the word of God this morning. You ready or you want to just go home? <laughs> no, people are saying they want to hear the word. Yes, I'm going to preach his word this morning. Is the Bible truth or not? How often do we actually really read the Bible or listen to the Bible? How often? Someone's saying you read it every morning? A little bit every morning? How much is a little bit that much? As we hear, some people do twist the word. It's not always a true truth. But how do you know what's right and wrong? How do you know if it's really his word or people twisting his word to make it applicable to what they want it to say? So how? How do you know it's his word? The Holy Spirit gives me or witnesses with, my, my, with the word of God spirit that it's truth. So you ready for my pictures? I think this morning it'll be pretty easy to follow my topic. There's one word, and you'll see it in all three of these pictures. It represents one word. Of course, we're all, that was pretty easy, right? So what do we hear? We see here, hear, listening, hearing, hearing his word, listening to his word listening with both our eyes and ears and someone else is saying listening that was someone online as well so that was pretty easy and of course that applies to us right maybe someone's saying sound someone's saying I can't hear some of us probably are hard of hearing maybe deaf blind here's Again, this is pretty easy. Now here's my second picture. So what do you see in this picture? Me? A qu someone's asking a question to somebody in the audience, or someone in the audience is asking a question. Someone's saying gospel, ask, preach. Answer. Someone's saying answer. Giving a, someone's giving an answer. That's a good one. Anything else? Someone said preach like me. But really, what should it be? The clear gospel. Okay. Here's, here's my third picture. Perhaps that'll help it a little more understandable someone is saying pointing pointing out something that was someone online said that someone is saying getting someone's uh, trying to get people's attention or someone's attention someone's making an announcement someone's screaming Apparently, someone they can't hear, so they're hearing with their eyes. Somebody's speaking, uh, a speaker. Uh, somebody's sending out God's message in a loud voice. The word of God being preached. Uh, there is no excuse. It's pretty loud, so there's no excuse that you can't hear it. <coughs> Someone's the announcer for the Lord. So all of what you have said from my three pictures, it can be described in one word. So guess what my topic is today? My one word for my message this morning. Listening. Listening, someone said. And you were correct. My topic is listening. Let me back up just for a moment because uh, the picture's here. You know why I picked this picture? 
Is it because I'm preaching? No, it's because that it, that's been changed. I'm listening to your questions. Sometimes people preach and they don't even ex any the one listen to what the audience has to say. But this is something where the speaker is actually asking maybe feedback from the audience or questions from the audience. And that's what we do when we listen to the Word of God. Sometimes we just listen to it, but we don't really hear it. Well, last Monday, I'll just give you an example here. Last Monday, I was talking with Diana Edwards and John, and this is on FaceTime. And of course, I thought I was pretty confident in this bet that I made. There was a game on Monday night, and I was sure that my team would win. So I made a bet. And I told her I would buy her some pop if she won. Now she's laughing. She's here laughing. But I didn't listen to, like, the statistics, the stats about that team and about who they were competing with. So I was eating my words after I had made that bet. And that cost me a dollar, but that's all right. At least I didn't, didn't bet too much, just a dollar for the water. But too often, Diana's saying, yes, 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 yes. She's agreeing with that. But often what happens is that before we speak, we don't think. You heard that expression, you don't think before you speak? We don't have facts before we say something. Let's remember the Bible is something that applies to our whole life. Not just for a short time, but applies for every stage of our life. Kind of like the Bible's like a mirror. We've heard that described as a mirror. We can see our face in the mirror, see our flaws, and see what needs to be fixed. We got a hair hanging or something on our face. You want to look nice in front of people, so we use a mirror to do that. And that's kind of the same way when you're talking with people. You're listening to what they're saying. Listen to their perspective on things with an open mind. We call that a two-way dialogue or conversation. Just like we watch in a mirror. The mirror is like our situations in our various lives. We use a mirror to analyze ourselves. We need to analyze our situations. And sometimes when you look in a mirror, once you get your, you think your everything is just so-so, you leave and you forget what you actually saw in the mirror. That is the same with the Bible. We read it, but we don't always hear it and apply. We have to realize that the Bible is God talking to us. And we know that because God talks about protecting us, and he does protect us. If God's talking to you, what are you supposed to do? We need to be grateful. We need to have an open heart and listen to him more, to be devoted to him. Suppose God told you I wanted you to go to f confront your enemy. Would you be willing to do it? Someone says, well, if it's really God, I would listen. I want to make sure it's God. God has promised that he will bless us. He's not left or forsaken us. He doesn't ignore our lives. He doesn't ignore us. He loves us. And he wants to bless us. 
At the same time, he wants us to listen, to obey. So my question for you, will you listen and obey what God tells you? Most people want to do it their way. They don't want God's way. Even his people do that sometimes. Someone is saying in the audience here, everyone has that kind of an attitude, right? We want to do it our way. Yeah, he's saying that everybody has that tendency to want to do it their way. So let's read from the, gr the s Psalms this morning, from the Word of God. It's Psalms 81, 8 to 13. And it'll be on two different slides here. Okay, now I'm going to sign it. Psalms 81, verses 8 through 13. And it says, My people, I'm warning you. I'm warning you, Israel, listen to me. Don't worship any false gods that the foreigners worship. I, the Lord, am your God. I brought you out of the land of Egypt. Israel, open your mouth, and I will feed you. But my people did not listen to me. Israel did not obey me. So I let them go their own stubborn way and do whatever they wanted. If my people would listen to me and would live the way I want. So my question to you is what do you see? What do you see here? Obviously Israel wasn't listening and that applies again to you and I. Will you listen, meaning obey God, will you? And that's a challenge for many of us just like children. This is when Moses was meeting the king, trying to get Pharaoh to let the children of Israel go. They were, for years, they were slaves in Egypt. But still, people wouldn't listen to God. And that's the same today, all over our, our world. How many, what percentage of Christians actually obey God? Probably a very small percent. Someone I think said 14 or 15 percent maybe, 20 percent maybe. And this is what we see in this verse here. People were not obeying. Now I'm going to highlight or show you the highlighted parts of this verse. It says in verse 8, My people, I'm warning you, Israel, listen to me. Maybe some of you think, well, that applies to the Jewish people a long time ago. No, it applies to us as well today. Doesn't matter. Israel and God's people today. We are his children. We are his people. Do we really listen and obey our God? Do we? 
That's what he's warning. That's what he's warning us. Even though we can't see God, his word tells us that this is something up applies to our life today. We are to obey him, to listen to him and obey him. So how do we actually do it? Well, first of all, we trust him. We trust God for everything in our lives. Even when perhaps he says no or yes, we listen and obey. The psalmist that wrote this was emphasizing that. He knew that people, even at that time, were ignoring God and not obeying him. Now look at verse 10. And it says, I, the Lord, I am your God. I brought you out of the land of Egypt. So Israel, open your mouth and I will feed you. Well, I think we all know the Ten Commandments, right? What is the first commandment? Does anybody remember? You have one God and only one God. And that's what this verse refers to. And this is also in the Old Testament where the Ten Commandments are found. It says, I am your God. And the Ten Commandments have no other God before me. I'm the, I am your God. Just like it says in the Ten Commandments. And yet, ironically, people still ignore him and disobey him. Those of us that accepted Christ as Savior, we have confidence and we trust in him. We are his children. And as it says, it says, open your mouth and I will feed you. And this isn't physical food. This is talking about how you open your mouth and minister to other people, telling them about the gospel. We as deaf people use our hands to tell people about the gospel. And the Holy Spirit will use you. He'll like talk through your hands and hearing people talk through your mouth as you witness to other people. That's what that verse means. So we as Christians, this applies to us, that we need to listen to what God is telling us to do, obey what he's telling us to do, and minister as he's telling us to do. So perhaps there's uh, about 10% uh, that maybe will do that. Well, what about the other 90%? We are to go to all the world and preach the gospel. So are you doing that? Are you listening and obeying God and what he's asking you to do? We need to make this our priority of life, about telling people about Jesus. And we know that Jesus himself was God. So our lives need to shining, be a shining example of what Christ's character is. It's like being our, our mouthpiece for God. You know, I love Bill. So Bill, I'm going to ask you to come here. If I'm going to use you for an example this morning. So Bill's going to be my example of how we should listen to God. I want you to stand in the front, and I'm going to get behind you. I'll be your hands. So put your hands behind you, and I will be. 
So maybe you can try to talk about Jesus, okay? Let's see here. Okay, hello everyone. How is everyone today? Um, I want to talk to you about Jesus. So I just want to explain about Jesus and what he did for you. He actually died on the cross and took all of your sins on himself on the cross. And once you accept him as your Savior and Lord, you can someday be with him in heaven. Okay. So I wasn't talking, but I was using, he was using, Jeff was using his hands to s preach the message. So that's like the Holy Spirit being inside of us to let us know what we are to say. And that's what it means about open your mouth and I will feed you. In other words, the Holy Spirit will give you the message. It'll come through your hands. Maybe sometimes you won't even realize what we're saying. It just comes out in our hands because the Holy Spirit is in there putting it out through your hands. We always need to pray that the Holy Spirit would use us. Many times while I'm preaching, things will come to my mind. It's not in my notes. It'll just come to my mind. And I know that's the Holy Spirit wanting me to, to put that out there in my message. And that's what I was trying to show you with Bill this morning. My hands are like the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Bill. Maybe s perhaps you have felt sort of a nudge from God. I just want to encourage you, pray. And allow the Holy Spirit to work through you. He will, he will use you. I don't know about individuals here. God knows you. Maybe you've all experienced this as well, but some of you maybe are intimidated, and that's natural. But God will take care of that too. He'll give you that boldness. And that's the way we spread the good news about Jesus Christ. You've got the Holy Spirit in you as you listen to his nudging and his calling and obey. He will use you. Like one soul may be asked to go minister to some kids. And maybe you have the gift of being able to make the gospel clear to children. And you tell them about Jesus and how he died on the cross for them. And, and they will listen to you as the Holy Spirit anoints you with his message. But be brave. Be willing to, con to confront people. And now in verse number 9. What? Wait a minute here. Verse number, yeah, 11. Verse number 11. And it says, But my people did not listen to me. Israel did not obey me. God knows who's going to obey him. Those believe Those non-believers, of course, won't obey him. But what really grieves God when his own children, his own people, don't obey him, don't listen to him. This is why we need to ask ourselves, are we really, I mean really, listening to God and obeying him? It's very clear here that a non-believer won't listen to God. But we are his people. We are his chosen people. And when we don't listen, that grieves the heart of God.
sometimes you'll see some road signs when you're driving or something that maybe shows up on a TV commercial. Kind of like a little reminder. Have you listened? Have you listened? Makes you think. Just sometimes out of nowhere, we'll see something like that. Are you listening? Are you paying attention? God uses different ways to get our attention. He uses our eyes, our ears, our nose, our mouth, our senses to get our attention. And remember, we aren't like the non-believers. We are his children, so we are to obey, to listen to him. Are you allowing the Holy Spirit to work through you? Now let's go down to verse 13. It says, if, there's that big if. That's a strong word, that if. If. That means something that's not yet happened. But <coughs> means opposite. But if, if my people will listen to me, and will live the way I want. That means obeying him. That's very clear there. It's very clear that we are to tell others about Christ. You feel like you're doing that? Or perhaps not? We listen to God and we obey him. He may ask you to something, do something very simple like going to a friend and sharing the gospel with a friend. Or maybe pray for that person or help that person. He's looking for his people that are willing to obey him. There's a friend of mine that a long time ago this happened. Uh, someone that we know was sent to prison, uh, was sent to prison. And many years later, he felt a nudge, or I felt a nudge to go and visit him in prison, and I just kind of ignored it for a while. I felt that person was an awful person, but I keep get, I kept getting that nudge that I've got to go talk to him about the Lord. So I looked down the computer, and of course I had to fill out a form on the computer about my name, my address, and whatever they required on that form, and then I sent it out there to the prison. I didn't know if they allowed me to go in or not. I waited several months and again there was that nudge from God so when you keep getting that nudge you don't ignore it so I decided I would go to the pri prison and visit this prisoner and what an experience that was the process of getting into there to see this person he was so thankful when I did finally get in there to, and to minister to him about Jesus. He was so grateful. And I told them that the Lord will forgive him. And he already had heard that message. So obviously God was working in him too. So the point was I obeyed God. And I know you too have probably experienced the same thing. When you get that nudge to minister, maybe there are other reasons where you're getting that nudge to help others in need. Fixing, maybe perhaps fixing something or someone that just needs to chat, chat, or needs a little chat. Someone that needs to vent, perhaps. They just need someone to listen. Do 
Now, before I show you the next verse, I want to just make sure that you are understanding clearly about the Holy Spirit that lives within you. And he's the one that will use your hands. And this will be my final verse for today. And it's from John chapter 14, verses 25 and 26. And it says, I already told you these things while I was with you. But the helper, he will teach you everything. And he'll cause you to remember all that I told you. This helper is the Holy Spirit that the Father will send in my name. Do you understand that verse? Jesus made it clear in this verse that the Holy Spirit will be sent. He told his disciples many things and he called the Holy Spirit the helper. And the Holy Spirit will help them to deliver the message as long as you are willing and obedient. Jesus gave you the Holy Spirit. You and I both have the, you and I have the Holy Spirit. And that's what it means. Go and spread the good news about Jesus Christ. So he wants you to listen and obey. He's called you to listen and obey. This is what Jesus said. So therefore, we need to obey. We need to do what Jesus says. Right? Amen? So we need to listen and obey. We need to do what's right. Now, this is John's favorite part, right? He's, well, he's right here in our audience here, the, the trivia questions. So here's my first question. Is this true or false that Jesus' garments were changed three different times during his trial. How many say that this is true? No hands are raised. How many say it's false? We've got a few hands raised. Okay. Two. Interesting. Okay, you want to see the answer? The soldiers. Um... Herod, I guess, Herod and the soldiers changed his clothes. Soldiers twice and Herod once. So yes, it was three times. Sometimes in jail, maybe they have a shirt and tie, man and woman, maybe a woman has a dress, and when they come out, then they've got a different change of clothing. When, or when they're in prison, they have different clothes than when they come out of prison, so maybe twice. But anyway, this was three times. Here's my next question. So is this one true or false? That the Bible speaks of a giant who had six toes on each foot and six fingers on each hand. How many think it's true? One hand raised. How many say it's false? We have a few hands. What do you think? Hmm. 
This is not Greek mythology either. This is true, true or false. It's found in the Bible. Well, the answer is, of course, true. And that's found in First Chronicles, chapter 20, verse number 6. It says, Later the Israelites fought another war with the Philistines in the town of Gath. In this town, there was a very large man. He had 24 fingers and toes. He had six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot. So altogether 24. He also had a son. He also was a son of a giant, of the giants. So yeah, that was true. Very interesting fact there. Someone's saying, really? Can't believe it. Something new she learned from the Bible today. I can't imagine having six fingers. Where would it be? I don't know. And toes. Someone's putting it between the thumb and the forefinger. My last, last question here. So is it true or false that Joseph, Jacob's son, was he buried, was buried in Egypt? How many say that this is true? No hands are raised. How many say it's false? We've got three hands raised. Well, here's the answer. So Joseph, there's two Josephs in the Bible. There's Joseph that had the co many colors, and then Jesus' stepfather. He's in the New Testament. We're talking about the Old Testament Joseph. So the answer is false, and that's found in Joshua 24, verse 32. And it says, when the Israelites left Egypt, they carried the bones from the body of Joseph with them. They buried the bones of Joseph at Shechem on the land that Jacob had bought from the sons of Hamor, the father of the man named Shechem. Jacob had bought that land for a hundred pieces of pure silver, and this, this land belonged to Joseph's children and was handed down to them. Remember, they left the land and went through the, they were going to the promised land. They left Egypt and they were going to the promised land. They were in the land of the wilderness for a long, long while. So the answer is false. And now some of you are real happy. You can go home. You have to see my cute pictures, right? <laughs> So today I was talking about listening and obeying. This little boy and girl were listening and they're saying, hey, did you hear that? People in heaven have ever laughing life. Sometimes kids don't always hear right. They kind of twist it either in their minds the way they, and I got that problem. I think we all have that problem too. Sometimes at work I get confused with people say, is it 15 or 50? Yeah, I get confused too. So, so <laughs> I use my hands doing a five and a zero for 50 <laughs> or 15. 
someone saying the same thing. She's got some problems like that. Other people having the same issues with misunderstanding. No, and 13, okay. Right. Or 30 and 13, excuse me, 30 and 13. Apparently this man can't hear, and she's using a mi megaphone to get him his attention that his microphone or his hearing aid is ready. It's kind of like at the airport, they make those announcements. We can't hear it, even though it's loud. And if you're deaf, you obviously can't hear it. So if you're deaf and hard of hearing, what do you do when they make those announcements at the airport? Like those standby messages that they announce. So before I show you my next picture, I need to explain something. And it's again, it's related with listening. So here. So apparently deaf people understand this one. You turn off the light, you can't see what they're signing, and the conversation stops. This is part of our listening. Sometimes we get angry, don't want to listen anymore, so we turn the lights off so we can't see what they're signing. And that's cutting off the hands is what another way of an idiom sign for that. And I'm sure this has really happened. Someone in the audience is saying that happened, like at the bar. They were chatting, and then lights went off. I'm sure we've all experienced it. Yep. And now it's time for the Our Father, the Lord's Prayer. Does anybody want to come front and forward and sign that with us? Bill? Come on, Bill. Let's pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Every week we try to have different people come and lead us in the Lord's Prayer. And everyone's got a different style of signing, but it's still the Word of God. So it's important that we listen to the Word as it's being signed. Now for the blessing. May God go before you to guide you. May He go behind you to encourage you. May He be with you to be a friend and above you to watch over you and within you to give you his peace. Let's close in prayer. And I hope you stay warm, all of you. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for the Holy Spirit within us that helps us to listen and obey your calling. We want to follow your commandments and do what you want us to do. We want to please you as our Heavenly Father, and we know it's not easy. It's a challenge here. We have so many other things distracting us or influencing us, but by faith we trust you that you're going to make us strong and that our eyes will be only on you and will listen only to you. 
and it is a challenge for your people. We pray for those that are watching, those that are here, those that are watching online, that you would protect us as we go about our jobs and the weather and the different things that we have to do, shopping, whatever we need to do. We ask that you would be with us and protect us from all evil. We ask your Holy Spirit would get this COVID out of our lives and that we be we thank you for what your Holy Spirit is in us and, the, and how you've cleansed us and how made us are your people. We're here to worship and honor you. We pray for our sister who needs strength. We pray for our brother who needs relief from pain, RJ. We just pray for those that the one that has father had a, is in the hospital, those that had the one that had a stroke. You know our various needs. You need our and our health problems. While we're here on earth, we will always be challenged, no matter how old we are. But our point is we want to ser serve you, seek you, serve you, and do what you want us to do. We're so grateful for you. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless all of you. Thank you.